irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Amber Lynn, rockin', sexy, uncensored, only on L.A. Talk Radio. All right. Happy Thursday, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Rockin' Sexy Uncensored. We're coming at you live tonight on L.A. Talk Radio. I'm your host, Amber Lynn, and it is my great pleasure to be back in the house live with you guys tonight. I hope everybody had an amazing 4th of July weekend. I was on vacation. We were on replay. And this is the first time in, what is it, five years since I have been, it might even be more than that, since I've been live on LA Talk Radio that I actually took a vacation. Well, It was somewhat of a vacation. I was actually renovating my condos. So we're back in the house live for you. And of course, as usual, RNSU works overtime, folks, to bring you celebrity guests and co-hosts from the music, movie, and cutting-edge world of entertainment, each more exciting, and this week is no exception. We have yet another epic guest lineup planned for our listeners tonight. They are actually running just a little bit behind in LA traffic, so we're going to keep you guys busy until they come bustling into the studio, because once again, what would LA Talk Radio be and Rockin' Sexy You if it wasn't mayhem another Thursday in the studio with our listeners? By the way, folks, just to let you know, you can call in and join the fun here on our show live at 323 303-0815, and that will bring you right to our live line. You can join the fun here with us. Tonight, we have the return of a very, very special woman that you guys have listened to or seen. This is going to be our first time having her on live feed, but she's been on our show before, and um, she's amazing. This is a woman who has it all. She is a supermodel. She is a super mom. She is the stepmother to a very famous set of twins. I think you guys will all recognize, but I'm going to keep you guys in suspense for just a little bit longer. With her tonight is going to be fashion icon Jean Chang, and they'll be joining us in just a minute. A couple of current events that I have been dying to mention on the air. One of them is last week, we had a major, major win for animal rights in the city of Los Angeles. Now, I didn't know this, but I have been fighting and fighting. And those of you who follow me or follow our show on the internet know that I have a continued fight for the rights and rescue of animals worldwide. And any of you that have historically been with our show know that Kristen Renton, my former co-host, and I have worked with animals for a very long time. Last week, something came to my attention that I found completely shocking. I couldn't believe it. I have been campaigning for weeks and months over the Yulin Dog Meat Festival, which goes on in China every year. Now, at this festival, thousands of dogs are killed, brutalized, boiled alive, dismembered at this festival. And a lot of people... um, in America campaign to get this festival shut down. So here we go. Let me finish our announcement. Come on in, girl. And here she is in the studio. Why don't you come over here on this side? 
Have a seat right here. There she goes. Thank you. So let me just finish our announcement and then we'll get to our special guest. Just want to let you guys know that last week, Los Angeles banned right here in LA, the sale of dog meat and under the Animal Cruelty Act. It was a major, major win for people who love dogs and animals everywhere. I couldn't believe that it was happening right here in our very own city. So that is a little bit of trivia. Sorry about the um, hold up, guys, but we're going to get to our show now. And you see this beautiful, beautiful thing that just entered the studio. I was giving him a tiny bit of a teaser, but we are welcoming back a woman. And this woman, look at her. She has it all. She is an in-demand fashion and runway model. She has graced some of the most coveted fashion runways for A-list top designers everywhere. As an actress, she appeared playing herself in a couple of movies you will recognize. Be Now in 2015, she was playing herself. And in 2014's Schmooze or Lose. That's a tongue twister for me. She may perhaps be just as famous as the former wife of David Olson. She has two beautiful children with and the stepmother to the famous Olsen twins, which a lot of you recognize from the hit TV series, Full House. She is a super mom. She is a super, super model. Actress Mackenzie Olsen is here in the house with us tonight. Mackenzie! Hi, Amber. Thank you so much for having <laughs> me back on your show. I am so happy to be here and just thrilled with all the... Um, changes um the positive changes in our country in our world and as you said you know the banning of animal meat sales which um of course we would definitely um be huge advocates of dog and cat can you take this seat right here um as yes i am 100 percent pro the ban of the sale of I can't even say it. It's just hard to even say that. It's hard. Anybody it's hard in, in America, right? It's so like, so let's go to the next thing. I just want to fill the studio here. And they're used to this. Mayhem on a Thursday on Rock and Sexy on LA Talk Radio. It happens all the time. Joining us here live in the studio right now. He is the global ambassador and community chair member of the International Fashion and Film Awards. He is also the owner and manager of LA Fashion PR Fashion Icon. Gene Chang is here with us. Hi, Gene. Hey, great to be here. <laughs> How are you doing? Pretty good. Give you just a minute to settle. Say hello. We're on Facebook Live right now. We have three different Hi. live streams going on. Oh, wow. oh great. Right now. And we're excited to have you guys in the house. I'm sorry. I know it gets really tense when we're trying to get into the studio and LA traffic. It happens, LA right? Traffic. First of all, Mackenzie, you look absolutely Aww. amazing, girl. Look at you. Stand up for a second and just show. Oh, my goodness. Well, well you got like a little teaser coming into the studio, right? A, hopefully, look I don't at come you. In Does she, oh as she, she never Hello, changes, everyone. right? You Thank look you. amazing. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How have you been? You know what? I have been so busy. I've actually taken a little respite and um, been visiting family, and I've kind of just kind of regrouped and gotten grounded again. And very excited to tell you that um, Jean and I are collaborating on a fabulous, fabulous adventure in Venice at the Venice Film Festival coming up at the end of August. So that's really why we're here to talk about tonight. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the Venice Film Festival has been is much more prestigious even than the Cannes Film Festival. It's been wow. It's, I didn't know that because I am it, I was in Marina Del Rey before I came out here to the Valley to produce this show. So I was right adjacent to Venice and Santa Monica well, for Venice, years. No, yeah, um, Cannes France. I'm talking about Venice, Italy, though. In Venice, Italy. Oh, the in other, Venice. Venice. The other Venice. Venice. Yeah, the, the Venice. other Venice. I, being from California. Oh, how very course, white trash of me, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Da -da -da. Yeah. How wow. funny. Okay. So they do call this Venice the other Venice. The Venice other. Because oh, I was thinking, I didn't know we even had a fashion. We need to have one here, right, guys? I, I, I think they're more. 
I'll They're tell not- you guys what. Let's start the show with this. Number one, both of you guys, there is not enough information on them, on either one of these guys, on the internet. When you go to look you up, it's very little. It's very spotted. And then there's about... 14 different Gene Changs out there. Well, you, so you have you to have find you. Gene Chang but not as fashion. fabulous. Yes. Just put fashion. Right. And, and so all of that stuff will this come gives us the opportunity to be able to get to know you with the fans right here listening. So you can tell us about yourself. What what's current with you? What you're doing today? Um, I saw a lot of pictures of you guys at events here recently. So it it looks to me like you guys have got something brewing. This We've one here, this one here has always got something brewing, Thank and she's you. always got paparazzi following her. We're used to that, right? Well, yes, it's kind of a blessing and a curse because sometimes you want privacy, but when you're promoting such a fabulous event, such as Venice Film Festival and fashion, um, it's a wonderful collaboration and something that that I'm very interested to get out. You know, the message out. Um, uh-huh. We're representing several different very big designers and we're still procuring more designers um, to show their fashion in Venice Um, and as I was saying before the Venice Film Festival was established like 200 years before Khan correct well I think it was like 1930s so it's been it's since, much since like so this is your the, you, this is your production this time right because i noticed the one thing i did find out about eugene was that you do fashion and in pr it originated you originated as an entertainment law firm that wrapped the fashion and film industry and hot couture fashion designers during the oscars and can film festival and you now produce fashion shows out of right. beverly hills for top clients from the from the world over and so this is your this will be your event yeah. we're, he's exciting also filming we're making a fashion film while we're there that we will i will co-executive produce and it's gene's brainchild that it's a it's just a, an incredible opportunity to showcase fashion tell us about that gene take it over <laughs> okay so you know being a part of the fashion film industry uh, there's a fashion film circuit they have festivals that show only fashion films there's a huge niche developing right for fashion films. they're like short films but it's all about fashion okay you know, art films so about uh, 2011 is when I got involved in La Jolla they have the International Fashion Film Awards there and have you been to that have yeah I was given a uh, humanitarian award in the city of La Jolla as well so it this was not not too long ago but you originally started as an entertainment PR law firm right well I work for one where you know we we represented producers that distributed films in in Cannes okay and then and then I was invited to a fashion film uh, festival and I said I I didn't really know what a fashion film was at the time in 2011 you know if I said and that was when you you got into fashion yeah, really, you know, pretty much. You know, I mean, there was always fashion at the red carpets, but right. I wasn't a part of it. You know, I mean, everyone's uh-huh. wearing, you know, you go to the Oscars, like, what are you wearing? Right. right. But I wasn't really a part of any of that production. But once I started going to the Fashion Film Awards, then I realized there's a whole industry that's there to dress the actresses. You know, the whole whole industry. And actors. So, and actresses, actresses and, right, sure. both. But mostly actresses because right. that's where you get the show off. And you Unless, of course, you're Ben Affleck or, you know, George Clooney. But right. they all want to, you no, know, they Brad do. Pitt. They they're, they're fabulous. They're all I, being dressed by the top, uh, you know, designers right. in the world, you know. But but it's harder to kind of uh, identify with, like, this tuxedo or last year's tuxedo. Right. It doesn't yeah. change much. Big difference you know? between a couture it, gown on a woman. Tuxedos don't right. change too much. Right. 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 I'm sure. glad to see, though, and I don't know if you agree with this, that the men are actually coming out Stepping more out. in mm-hmm. the last, I'd say, in the last decade, right? Yeah, yeah. It's you great. really see men's fashion kind of evolving. and Right. It's more old school now. They're right. going back to the classic design tuxes, and it's just, you know putting in some color here and there, but um, it's nice to see. A lot that. of They're European cuts, a lot more European cuts coming and stuff like and that. And at Venice, it's, it's pumped up a notch from Khan. It's more exclusive, you know, higher level of um, class and sophistication, of course, because you've got royalty among the VIP um, list of, of actors and actresses that are in the films themselves and that are coming to the film festival. 
Now you did a film. I didn't even know about it. What is that? You played yourself. Was that a well? That film, um, the Hollywood Giants, is still waiting. You know. To be finished. It no, I'm talking about the forever. other two that were in your bio. Those were just little short pieces. These were just fabulous for being fabulous. Just fun type walk things on. to do. Yeah, I wasn't really interested in being in front of the camera in that regard at that time. You know, my focus has always been more into fashion. So, but now um, I have embraced the whole fashion film idea and industry that's become so huge because it just gives more of the history of each designer and you know what's behind the scenes with the models and how it all comes together and it it there's a lot of work that's involved that people just aren't aware of you don't just walk out of your house you know looking camera ready and it go, there's a massive you know selection of gown process and um, preparing and just choosing the right gown for the right event and at Venice as at con you know there are things happening all day every day and um, events revolving around not only just the films but um the awards themselves and the, sh the viewing of the films and the dinners and so forth so it requires there is so much work that goes into this so, I, oh, I don't know if our listeners months, will remember when we did la fashion week right oh that, and yeah. this was the first time i got to see her work <laughs> and she was well. you know you she did the the whole thing and the runway and the stage and you know All that. Very exciting. Well, thank you, Amber, for mentioning that. We're obviously LA isn't known as being a fashion capital of the world. We're more known for films, but um, you know, where you would see New York. I thought that was really odd. I was I you, to it be just, honest with you, I was a little disappointed in LA Fashion Week. I was expecting right. people from LA. Well, it's very you difficult know. to get the top designers to show here because they, they we just don't get that the, surprised the type me of um attendance that you would in New York or Paris, Milan, or um, at any of the film festivals like Venice and Con, you know, the big ones. But well, now that Jean's on the scene here, maybe we right. can change some of that. Because <laughs> I remember I was sitting in the audience and I was like, I can't believe that L.A., because we're so, and L.A., you know, we have all the movie industry and all the actors that you wouldn't see. I mean, people dress to go to Starbucks here. Right. But they're not going to dress up at the fashion week? Well, the top designers just don't show here. Right. It's just that's the reason. So so you don't get the um, the kind of attendance that you would want for that level of designer to make it worth it for them to show here. Right. Hopefully we're evolving and, you know, that will happen over the next Maybe you should years. take it over and produce it yourself. Well, you know, I, I've been working at this thing for about, what, the last six, seven years where we're trying to bring... A lot of the bigger designers to come to LA, um, like it, you know, the big ones are all stuck in New York. You know, Calvin Klein, right? Uh, well, Michael your Tom Kors, Ford, and all, your, all the big you know, stuff. Tom Ford, Ford. right? All the, all Tom Ford, I love. I wore, weird, my, I wore my Tom, Tom Ford. Actually, yes, my has, Dolce has a house here in LA. He right. lives in LA. Oh, he does. And he, he, and he has fabulous. the films out. Have you seen the latest film he did? No, Not I haven't. Animals. It's really, no, really good. I'll have to see that. Really. Amy, I love Amy Tom Adams, Ford. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. It's it's a really good film. It came out like two years ago, and he's he's actually a really good filmmaker. So you, you got know. you got the bug in 2011, right? Right. That and you said that's it. This is my place. Well, back then I I actually worked for uh, L.A. Fashion Magazine. You know, the magazine hired me, and my job was to take uh, these photographers they had. To go to the Hollywood parties, you know, where the celebrities hang out, like, mm -hmm. like you, right? Oh, like, yeah. you, know, like, you know, during like the Oscars or the Emmys, they hang out at the Chateau and they have their after parties and stuff. Right. So, the LA Fashion Magazine wanted to cover some of that celebrity. What it, what's what are the celebrities wearing? You know, because they weren't they weren't showing up at the Fashion Week. So. The magazine just said, let's go to where the, the celebrities right, are. Right, for the after party events. Yeah. And things. Right. So, well, yeah, it's it's called it LA Fashion Magazine? Yeah. So back back then, uh, I worked with them. Uh, I worked with them in Splash News. Splash News took me to New York Fashion Week, and I was like, oh, my God, New York's where everything's at. Right. New York is amazing. So I've been going to I New mean, York twice a, twice a year. You know? uh, February is their uh, fall season, and then September is their spring season for the next year. Right. They've got all the stuff. I love this guy. I, There's I, nothing like I've that in LA. I flew to New York my whole yeah. life 
two times a year to shop and buy all my clothes. Yeah, but all, all those, my all, all my those designers are showing wardrobe. in New York. Right. Like in 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 about eight days, you got like like six or seven major shows per day. There's there's a lot more packed but into the eight or, days. But six or seven days. major ones. Like you'll wake up in the morning, I'll say. Oh, Vera Wang, uh, Carolina Herrera, Michael Kors, Marc Jacobs. I mean, all, all the brands that you wear, you know? And you're like, oh, my God. You know, do you want to check out Calvin Klein? Right. And you go to Calvin Klein, and you got, like, uh, you got movie stars. You know, Nicole Kidman. You got, uh, right, the, the you know, you got all of the movie stars flying over from L.A. to go to these top shows. You know? And the great thing about New York is, and where LA is a little disjointed, is because in New York, Fashion Week truly is seven to eight days. In LA, it's over like six weeks, because you have LA Fashion Week, Style Fashion Week. Um, That's true. It's so fragmented. You're, there isn't. Thank one, you for mentioning yes, that. that. That is absolutely true. And when the, you have Art Hearts Fashion Week, it's all separate. So everybody's kind of, and some of them overlap. So you have people battling, you know, to get their A-list people that are coming to which shows because you find yourself running back and forth across town to try and get to two or three shows in one night that are at three different venues. It's so difficult. I wish it would all, you know, go back to how it originally was. So how did you guys week. meet and come up with the concept to go to Venice and do a, well, this? I've been going to represent the fashion film industry uh, since 2013 in Cannes. So Cannes Film Festival is a big, big deal over there. Yep. I was it's there in much... 1991. I received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the oh, Cannes wow. Film Festival. Yeah. It's pretty much Hollywood in Cannes, right? Amazing. I mean, so many people from if LA. If you've never right? been to Cannes, you have to go to Cannes. It's just it's, it, it's like the Disneyland for filmmakers. Right. right? And right. just the paparazzi and the oh, yeah. whole thing right there yeah. on the Riviera and the water and the way it, it's all set up. It's just right. You don't need it's to an set. experience. So yeah. Phil, any picture you take looks like the backdrop is a you know, a movie set because it's just so picturesque and beautiful and you know, the landscape, the water, everything. But I've, Venice, can you imagine Venice? I mean even more beautiful. Have you been to Venice? Is, no, I've never I've never been to <laughs> Venice. As a matter of fact, one of my girlfriends just got back from there and um she was telling me a lot about it. I thought that it was a, I picture it as like a small town. It's like pretty, it's it's on, it's on a, it's on a sliver of an island. It's right. Not, it's not even on the main Venice island. There's a main Venice island. It's called St. St. Mark's Square, you know where you see the big towers. Mm -hmm. But it's not even on that. Have you been to San Diego? Of course. Yeah. You know what Coronado Island looks like? I think so. It's like a little sliver, right? Right. It's, it's like, like that. Well, how are you going to fit all these people on there? We can fit her anyway. No, she's so hotels, tiny. There's, Look there's, at how tiny she is. She's amazing. There. Yeah. The hotels yeah, there, like the Excelsior Hotel that's right next to the festival, it's like sold out and it was like 800 bucks a night or something for the. Like, oh, yeah. For the, you know, I remember just that. Just too. Cramming people. Yeah. Again, but, tiny but, but you can stay at the other island, which is uh, St. Mark's Island, which all the tourists are, you know? And and you take a little water taxi because it's a, it's a canal. Everything system, is right? water. There's yeah. you know. So you take a little system. water yeah. taxi around. You know. Can you so imagine? tell us about this event. What are our listeners or people that want to get involved in it going to expect when they see it? Yeah. So Venice Film Festival is the oldest film festival in Europe. I don't. I think they started in the, in the early 30s. It could have been 1930s. You know, because that's when filmmaking started. You know, they right. invented film in the 20s, something like that. And they started making the early silent films, right? The 20s, 30s. And Europe said, let's have a big film festival. And right, recognize these songs. You know? Yeah. And it started. And then, you know, it started in the 30s. And then it went on. And then the 40s, we had a war. And then after that, then Cannes popped up after the war. Like and once the Cannes Film Festival came out, it was like, that was... Because, you Now know, everybody the, sees that as the yeah. leader. Right. Right. It's but but now, they're the only two big ones. You know, they're the only two big festivals. They have the huge red carpet. You know, the uh, Hollywood shows up. The only difference in the setting is that uh, Cannes is in May, which is the start of the spring season, you know? So the weather there is a little bit cool, rainy sometimes, but the sun's out. And, you know, it's kind of like uh, being in San Francisco or something, you know? It could be cold. It could be... What month is that? In, in the May. In May. Yeah, okay. May. So, you know, it could be rainy. It could be not. You know, it's like San Francisco weather, right? Right. Venice is in September, beginning of September. 
end of August. So it's it's almost like LA weather. Okay. You know, so it's like you know, it's a little Gorgeous warmer. It's it's summery. So so it's it's more like Hollywood when you're in Venice Film Festival, you know, because it's it's Italy, you know. Right. So when are we gonna? When is the first showing? Well, the festival begins August twenty eighth, and it goes to September. Seven. Yeah. And yeah. you'll be appearing so it's like eleven days. Who are the the models and a talent that's going to be scheduled for so the show? So they published that probably you know maybe about a month before the festival. So not yet. Uh, where all the official films that are be screening there, it's going to be you know in the in the internet. It'll say who, which films are going to be screened, and then that's when you get the list of all the movie stars that are showing up. The last couple of years, you had people like well, last year was Lady Gaga, you know, that yep. big big gown on there. And Madonna was there. She's amazing, isn't she? Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. You know, they all show up. George Clooney. George Clooney has a house in uh, Lake Como nearby, you know? Mm -hmm. So for him, it's just easy to just go to Venice. So it's and such Venice, a smaller group of people to begin with. So it's only the top actors and actresses up that are in the films that are being screened and awarded. And the, you know, the creme de la creme of the A-listers. So... And you got to think about the kind of uh, filmmakers you came out of Italy, you know. So Italians have that Fellini, the Bertolucci, the you know the the, the serious filmmakers, you know. It's amazing. Sophia it Loren, is. A, it's like a know, completely right. different world when you go to Europe. I went to um, Paris and Monte Carlo and Italy, and made films in Rome for like you know a, two times. I went. Both times I went and stayed for several months. It's a completely different world. Everything is different. The way they eat, the way they run their day, right? The Everything filmmaking. is much more luxurious and time put into it, and just the experience. And um, also, um, Jean didn't mention this, but Andrea Bocelli is performing at one of our events. Oh, that's so exciting! That's a highlight for me. He's okay. actually getting an award, but he's probably going and to he'll be performing. Yeah. As what well. is the award for? It's it's an award that's uh, given out by the Ministry of Culture from Italy. It's called the Kino Awards. K I N O. So, Kino I th is uh, uh, translates to cinema. You know. Okay. So the Ministry of Culture hands out these, um, you know, awards every year for arts and entertainment, and this year it's it's going to go to Jeremy Irons. And uh, Andrew Bocelli, and probably a few more other people, but those are the bigger names, you know. And so that's so, exciting. Uh, so how how long are you going to be gone over well, there? Well, I mean, we're planning to be there for the first eight days, and then to be determined after that, because the week following is London Fashion Week, and then now you have to go to London, so, my favorite city. Really? Yeah, oh, I love London. Yeah. yeah we're um, definitely considering it. I know. Um, you know, time permitting, that would be fabulous. And I know Jean tends to bounce from one fashion week to the other because that's when they all start up again, you know, in Europe after um, Venice Film Festival. So it's an exciting time to be in Europe, definitely. So, girl, I have to commend you here. I mean, I'm just sitting here staring at you going, I can't believe how absolutely wonderful you look. And Thank I you. mean, you've been through so much. Yes. You know, I mean, I don't know what you want to talk about and not talk about. So I'll just let you kind of talk about with everybody what has been going on in your life. Well, you know what? I had gotten so busy that I literally just took the past six months to go and be with my family. So I have really um, kind of dropped out of sight. And with your immediate family, like your my, father. My and dad your... is elderly and... Um, my mom passed away four years ago, so that's been my focus on family. So your dad's been alone, and that must be hard for him. Well, yes, it's been um, extremely difficult, and it just makes you reassess what's important to you, your values, and of course, as is you know to most people, my family is the most important thing to me in life. And you're I, talking about your children or your my parent, you know, my dad, parent. my brother, my sister, my children. Um, uh -huh. You know, just where I come from and what, you know, makes me complete. And that's where I came from. So I'm from the South. Um, so I just really unplugged. and. Where is it there. you're from? Is it Arkansas? But yes. Arkansas. Okay. So I've been in Arkansas this whole time. It's been absolutely wonderful. You do things like go fishing, play golf, just, you know, spend time with quality time. Everything revolving around family and church activities and sports. And my niece graduated from high school. So I was really happy to be there for that. Um, 
and just and your kids are here your yeah my children your little ones. are here the, the two little ones are here and they're thriving but um that was um you know they're kind of spreading their wings now because they're just can you believe this woman has this body right here <laughs> has carried two children thank you amber and, and they're actually adults now right well yeah they're um, i mean they're grown yeah jake um they're they're um out of high school let's just say that right and um it, it was um I so you have the a lot more blessing free in my time. life just having the children than right. you know, having my children um and just that whole transformation it's a very humbling experience i gained 60 pounds with both pregnancies and then you know think, think i can't to, even imagine to, thank that. you god for my genes but you know i just went back to my original size i it was just a, you thing. never had any problems losing the the no, weight I after you had the baby tried. no i just breastfeeding makes your body just naturally go back to normal so but that being said um you know i realize now it's time for me to do me and you know get, get back, back into, into your my career, career and focus on that right so i'm you know i'm back in la and i'm really excited to be a part of the venice film festival and the upcoming fashion weeks and um just see what the next chapter of my life is um, and you're just open to embracing whatever comes your way and i i've been um you know very blessed throughout my life and it's been non-stop from you know the word go um but now it's time for me to just rediscover myself and um at some point of course you know i'd like to write a book and um you and i had briefly talked before the show about a woman women's advocacy advocacy and you know making women stronger and more self-aware in today's world and um you know i'll talk more about that women and men <laughs> well yeah right? everybody needs to be responsible and um i think the world is evolved and in some ways it's it's evolved downward right we need to elevate back up and people and need to re-elevate and yeah. i think most people agree with that i don't think it's going to be a problem getting people to want to do that i think everybody right. recognizes we need more community we need more 100%. to be more in support of you know of our each fellows other, our right country you know our patriotism and you know god and country or the you know family those are the most important values that we should all have but people forget that you get caught up in your day-to-day -day and you know, you kind of lose sight of what's really important. So it's nice to get regrounded, and um, our everything is on the upswing right now with um, our government. You know, peaceful um, interactions with other countries, and I want to, you know, come forward and do my part in helping that to happen. So does that mean you're going to get into politics of some sort, or you know what? I am a very conservative, um, 100%, and. Yes, I isn't it amazing. She's conservative. She's just no, like <laughs> I. Well, I was. She's. Um, you're such a paradigm. You know, you're like she walks in in this fabulous, sexy mini dress, and then she's like very conservative. Well, you know, I mean, very conservative. You, you know, you have a body that was given to you by God, but you, you, you know, you that doesn't define you. It just enhances, you know, what you're able to accomplish. At, you know, phys being physically fit is important, and I'm a huge advocate of health organic food and working out and working out releases endorphins and you know makes you do you attribute um, that to your longevity i think so my dad from was your was a, working out and taking care of yourself because yeah. i i mean every time i see you you look better thank you oh you're yeah so well you are gorgeous too but thank, thank you, you so but much. i mean i work at it and i work out and i you know you i do. work for it yeah i you know my dad was a military man he was in world war ii and he is a huge advocate of of work ethic and working out and from a very young age he was into weightlifting um and not bodybuilding but weightlifting and he joined the military when he was very young he tried to enlist when he was 16 and his dad made him wait until he graduated from high school and um he was in he was in the navy and he's just um since birth just ingrained into all of the children in my family you work hard for everything you get you work out and you you earn it you you know you're responsible for um just being aware and he's an, a huge advocate of if you're feeling like you're getting a cold or the flu get out and run a couple of miles 
and you, you'll get over it. You know, you'll sweat it out. And it, it's really true. Um, anyway, uh, that, um, I think it's, that is. What about really acting? I, it surprises me that you've never pursued a career in acting. Doesn't she seem like she would be Thank an you. amazing actress? Like you, know you would have a TV show or I've something. I've been many times about, um, about that. And I've wanted, um, and very purposefully stayed behind the camera and out of the limelight. Well, I think for when years, I when, you're, when you have little yeah. children, I mean, a, a lot of women do it. I shouldn't say that. I they have a career, an acting career, and they also raise kids. I mean, it never stopped yeah. Pamela Anderson or right. any of, you know, any of these top right. actresses from doing both. I mean, both. it's hard but, to have it all and give your children what they need. And for me, you know, having the four older children, um, you know, and two heavily involved in the show business world and, you know, doing all that travel with them. I was very focused on protecting the younger two from that until they got old enough to make that choice for themselves. And um, they, you know, m our youngest son did some modeling, and you know, he's decided he wants to make films now and be behind the camera. So he's as a producer chosen that path. or a director. Um, well, yes, and. Um, our youngest daughter is a journalist, so she's um, with. She works for NBC right now, so and she's in college, so she's at, um, in college, currently. I hate to say where, but anyway, just for privacy. Yeah, privacy. don't. Yeah, don't want to say that. But anyway, <laughs> it's all good. But they're they're so um, accomplished and independent, and I'm so proud of them for the path that they've chosen strictly. Um, Having been protected from that their whole childhood and, and until now they've decided that's what their passion is. So um, I'm very proud of them. And yeah, they're just 100% as grounded as you could ever imagine kids being. They they have no sense of entitlement. They are you know polite and um, extremely well balanced and just it's. Um, Growing up in but LA now is not that you're, you're, you're re embracing your own life and well, yeah, your own so future. Now it's so, my, it's would you be, would you be, be open to the idea yeah. of somebody coming to you and yes. saying, let's do a, a TV series or, a, you know? I am in the process of doing that, actually, right. of fashion. Um, well, you'll be doing this with the fashion. Well, week, June right? and I have that project at the Venice Film Festival, but um, I am, and also, um, and I'll mention this on another show, but there is another fashion filmmaker that has a fashion reality TV series, and he had asked me to be in that from its inception, and they've already filmed six episodes. They're doing three more, and he's asked me to be involved in that. And Gene and I are potentially collaborating with him to film those episodes at Venice while we're there doing the film festival. So that's going to be a great interaction, and I'll definitely want to come back and do another show with him as a guest and talk to you more about that. That would be awesome. He's fabulous. So we'll love him. How about Gene? Can we get Gene to talk about himself at all? His backstory? Where did you did you plan when you were growing up when you were little? Where are you from? Well, I grew up in Long Beach. Okay. So I went to UCLA. And you know, oh, so you're from LA area. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. All, he's I, an, I thought he was an LA kid. Everyone, but I wasn't everyone, sure. Everyone, Look how I he's know. dressed. He looks like a surfer. <laughs> right? Everyone, I was thinking he told me he was gonna I, I'm, from, I'm like, what are you wearing? I'm from oh, Orange yeah. County. Yeah, and, yeah. and we're casual yeah, yeah. on our show. It was like ninety degrees today. Right. Yeah. yeah. So everyone I know went into the movie business. You know, everyone. All your friends from high school. When you were growing up from yeah. high school? Everyone, I, we did a film in high school. What did you want to be when you were growing up? You know, I don't know. I mean, you know, when you're in college, you, you just like take everything. Uh huh. But the fun stuff was the entertainment business. So, so you were like, I want to be in the entertainment so business. So I, I don't know. I, Most I was like kids a business would say major. you want to be an astronaut or something like that. Yeah, but I right. just wanted to get out and start working because I wanted to be I, Barbie. <laughs> Can't you tell? Well, you've, kind of like, <laughs> you've accomplished that. Very well. I, and while I was a student, I, I was like an intern at uh, a film distribution company, and he ran his house. He ran his business out of his house in Bel Air, you know. So he had like like we went to his work and it was like five six people working in the you know the business area. Back then we had like um, telex machines and all that. It was a while you know the late eighties, and 
What a time that was. And, I loved the 80s. But we're, the selling, fashion, but all we're of selling all these, you know, film rights to Europeans back then. It was before the European Union. So you go to like the Cannes Film Festival or the Cannes MIPCOM for the TV rights. And you're selling it to like Belgium or France or Italy separately, right. you know. So there's a lot. So of were this you involved business. in this, or were you just was he mentoring? Yeah, I was working. Yeah, I was working in the film distribution company. Okay. You know? So I thought, hey, you know, after I graduate, maybe I'll just go into film distribution or all that stuff because everyone I know was in the film production or distribution or whatever. It's a huge industry, you know, when you're at UCLA. Right, in some capacity. Yeah, there's always, involved. you know, movie stars running around having a, um, what do you call it, a celebrity events and tournaments and stuff you know so I didn't really think much of it until you know I got out and I started working for these firms that did all the the contracts for you know films which were kind of the ugly stuff you know people fight over these things you but know, the fine fighting, print, you're fighting like for the option of, a, of, a, of a, an idea right you know? and then the storyline and then for about a dozen years it was all of that stuff and, and I was I was working with AFI at the time the Film Institute you know, they have the AFI Film Fest in November at the Cinerama Dome. Oh, that's in right. LA. Big, I've actually know, heard of that. It, okay. That's the weird thing about LA is that's the biggest film festival in Los Angeles. Can you believe that? AFI, I mean, but it's not famous because it's just industry. You know what I'm saying? Cannes is famous, right? Yeah. Well, but I know about everybody if you say knows about AFI. Cannes. They're like, what's you, AFI? A lot of people right. have heard of it. I mean, of it's course, biggest, everyone's aware of that that's Academy how Awards, go award season. To buy and sell films. But not the films. You know, November, the AFI. American Film Institute. Uh, Audi bought it for a couple of years, and they called the Audi Fest, you know, in November. So it's 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 where all the big red carpets are, you know, big premieres. So but AFI. The only difference is in LA, and no, people bring out their talent and act, but the big only, actors. No, I mean, they do, you know. but they don't yeah. dress up. Because a lot of these, they, they just like drive down from the hill and they're regular. Well, that's a kind of <laughs> LA thing. In Europe, no, they, no, in Europe they dress. Yeah, they dress in New York, they dress. It's more of a left coast idea that we're just well, it's, you know, we dress. We the dress girls, for the weather, right? The <laughs> yeah. girl, the girls are always in heels and you know dresses and whatever. The guys are it's just yeah, it's more casual, and I think even more so today that the fashion. Um, in Los Angeles or even up and down the coast is just become, you know, more loose and casual. Yeah. As soon as I hit can, I realized, oh my God, the rest world. of the right. world, the wow. rest of the world sees Hollywood differently than we, we see it. Like, you know, we live here, we drive up and down, you know, I mean, it's like a living quarters, you know, Hollywood. Well, it's just our everyday. But the rest of the world world. has an imagination of Hollywood that is shaped by our films. You know, the glamour of the film industry. They think of Hollywood as this like magical place, and then they come here and try to start careers. I have them on my show all the time. You can't get it out of their heads. Like if you go, I I was in Germany once, and you know we're we're at some film festival, and uh, these Germans uh, found out I was from L.A. You're from L.A. Uh, You've been Hollywood, and I'm like. Yeah, I've been to Hollywood. It's part of LA. I live wow. there. They they right. think it's like some some mad because all they know about Hollywood is from all the movies they've seen. Think of all the movies you've seen about Hollywood. It's like you know crazy right, stuff. Right, a stereotype and, kind of thing. And and even when they come here, and they think all the girls look like this. Well, right? they, they do. Well, yeah, thank you. But then they come to Hollywood, you know, on a regular day, a regular afternoon, you know, uh, when we drive around Hollywood Boulevard, and it's like uh, it's just Hollywood Boulevard. They don't see Hollywood Boulevard like you do. They see right. it like, oh my God, this is that. This is from that scene. Oh you know, my, my God, favorite. that's the yeah. You know, they go to uh, Beverly Wilshire and go, oh my God, that was where Beverly Hills Cop was, or that was where Pretty Woman. You know, that's all they know about these buildings is is the movies that they love. So, the movie industry since the 1930s has cultivated LA that image into of this LA more, around the world, bigger than life. You know, it's it's where it's where Schwarzenegger and, and uh, Bruce Willis and uh, you know Van Damme run around and kick ass. You know You're what I mean? talking about way back in the day. <laughs> no, no, what right. I'm saying is everybody's like, who are those people? <laughs> they're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Never heard of what is it? Are we talking about all the millennials? If her kids are watching, they're going, who's that? No, but of course they know these too, people. You know. But I mean, their image of Hollywood is what the film industry crafted. You know, on film and and. There are like hundreds of millions of people out there that, and we're, we're including the fashion designers that I work around with. 
fashion when I go to Paris Fashion Week. Who's your favorite? Your top, your top three. Oh, so you don't have to pinpoint somebody. No, I mean, they're so different. It's like, it's like saying... He would like, get killed. Who's it's like, who's your fa painter? favorite child? Well, I have favorites. Favorite when we did LA Fashion Week, yeah. I wanted to wear something from each of my favorite designers. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Ford is one of them. Dolce & Gabbana is a staple for me. Um, Azadine Alaya, because he just passed away. So, and Versace, another right. one. And when I was standing oh. on the red carpet, I remember this happened. They were like, where'd you get... Who's the shoes? And I said, Azadine Alaya. They didn't know who the Azadine Alaya was. I was like, what? This is LA Fashion Week. You don't know Azadine Alaya? And so we were like, we have to change this. We have to change this for LA. Right. You know? So yeah. That's why we're so here. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. So bring so it the, back the from nice, Venice, the, the, Chang. Yeah. So the nicest thing about being involved in this fashion film industry is that there are really gifted filmmakers now starting their careers as fashion filmmakers, which is different. You, know, yep. like you go to film right. school it's and you're, you're learning how to do storylines that are two hours long, you know, development. But these people, they don't care anything about plots and storylines. They want to just show art, like for... Right, fashion three, is art. It's completely... It really 20 minutes, because we're in a new culture where, you know, you're watching a lot of these clips on the internet, you know, and it's viral and they're short. And if it's really good, you get like millions of followers in a couple of days. And so they're geared towards that. But with Until they disable your account. Production value, you know? So the, <laughs> Europeans, the right. Europeans have been filming, film, filming fashion films for like 10 years. You know, if you Google uh, Louis Vuitton or Chanel, there's tons of content out there, really right. interesting stuff. And the Americans are starting to go from uh, videography, you know, like when you have a fashion show, they just have a, a videographer show like what's going on at the fashion show right just there's, bloggers there's, and just, things like that it's there, like you know, it's it, all it really over documented? you can do everything now For, with on your phone. one if of these if you type in you fashion film on google you'll see all the current stuff pop up and usually it'll be on youtube or vivo one of those two channels and then if you type fashion film awards you'll see all the uh the filmmakers that won recent films and they're just i can't they're insanely creative. I mean, like, you watch it and you're like, where did these get these ideas? It's not from here, you know? What, what, what kind of drugs are they taking? So last year at London Fashion Film Festival, I saw a film that won, and I was like, where do these guys Just get their ideas? Just blown away, right, the concept. It's called and... Wolf. It's, it's, a, it's a pair of uh, filmmakers from Amsterdam, uh, Wolf, W-O-L-F, and Lamb, L-A-M-M. -M. So you can Google Wolf and Lamb. And they had a movie, uh, a film called Unstoppable. And it, here's how it starts. This is how insanely creative they are. It starts at an intersection, you know. You know, there's a fashion guy coming out of a, a submarine that entered a, I mean, it, it's hard to even explain, a right? Submarine a, a submarine that, from that, the uh, that popped up freeway. in an intersection uh -huh. of, a, of a major intersection. And then a guy pops out. He's going to get his pick up his tuxedo or something, and there's all the scenery behind it, and just the thought of like where would you start a movie and go? Right, hey, let's the concept. Have, like let's where does have that a, come Let's from? have a submarine, and it's gonna pop out of an like an intersection. Like where where do thoughts like that come out? You know, but when you watch this thing, it, it works. It's entertaining. You want to watch it again. It's colorful, and so you should literally look it up, and, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. So you've got these people that have these crazy ideas they want to put on film, and it can be three minutes, it could be 20 minutes, and they just want to create that image and produce it. And, and then it takes them, what, three, four weeks to get it out. Instead of, like, if you did a feature, it might take you a year or two to even get money to put a feature together, right? And so you're seeing fashion films so a much longer time. Shorter. Let me ask you guys Sorry, something, because we are, like, almost ready to go here. Oh, wow. How do your fans follow you? How do they get involved in your event? Um, do you most have a website set up for it? Most of the people know me from the fashion film industry. Okay. So, for example, uh, I work with the La Jolla Fashion Film Festival, London Fashion Film Festival. They're followable either on their website. You can Google them. Uh, La Jolla is coming up next month, uh, or actually a couple weeks, for the International Fashion Film Awards in La Jolla. Okay. And, if and you're, it's if you're... Jean Chang at Facebook? <clears throat> um, you can, on Facebook, it's Jean Chang 
uh, fashion PR. Okay. But and I found him easily, just most, so you guys most know. Most people will find me on uh, Instagram because that's the industry standard for the fashion industry, and that's LA Fashion PR. Okay. And how about you, girl? How are people that? following you? If Do they ever stop? I, you know, <laughs> I've tried to stay so private for so long that... Well, you're on... Yes, but I am now, you know, able to, um, you know, come forward and emerge as fashion a presence in the fashion world and you know perhaps film and television so i will be back to let you know more about that but i mean you know we're gonna have her back on the show guys it was running just a little bit but behind in traffic but i wanted to give where do your fans follow you or do they she's she's on social media you can find social media but um and if you're I'll running around L.A., you can business. almost not miss her, no, right? You, and when they do get the event together, we're going to have them back on the show. They can talk more about it then. Yeah. I want to thank you guys. So thank you so yeah. much, Amber, for having us. It was I, such a pleasure It was honor. such an amazing time you. having you. And I want to thank you guys and wish you such best of luck with this event. And does it have a website, the uh, Venice Fashion Film Festival? Well, the Venice Film Festival is uh, – uh, they're run by um, – it's called the uh, La Biennial. They have a tw- twice a year. What's the art festival? But the website don't... address. Um, you could probably just Google Venice Film okay. Festival. Venice Film Festival, and it'll pop guys. Up. There we and go. It'll be in Italian, and then there's a. There's it'll a... Be... We'll <laughs> have more in Italian. For you. That's all the time we have for tonight's episode of Rock and Sexy <laughs> Uncensored you. Radio. I want to thank all of our fans and listeners for being so patient and joining us live in the studio tonight. And thank both of these wonderful people for coming in to talk about their their film festival. Check it out, guys. Get your tickets to Venice. Yes, it's going to be everyone. an amazing event, and we will have them back on the show Venice, soon. Venice, Italy, not California. <laughs> Muscle Beach. <laughs> Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio.